4.3 billion people live across this vast continent called Asia. And we are telling their stories. On this edition, Trouble in Paradise. We look into the harmful effects of unbridled tourism on Thailand's environment from land to sea. And decomposing plastic. A 15-year-old boy from the Philippines invents biodegradable plastic. Can it solve the garbage problem in his country and the rest of the world? I'm Martin Lowe, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the programme. Thailand attracts more than 30 million visitors every year to its white sand beaches, coral reefs and other scenic spots. In a country where the economy has faltered in recent times, tourism is a consistent success story. But experts say Thailand's environment is already paying a steep price. Beaches are overcrowded, coral destroyed and dump sites filled to the brim with trash. I visited islands in the south of Thailand to investigate the impact of excessive tourism. Planes take off and land every few minutes at this tropical island airport in the Gulf of Thailand. Thailand has aggressively promoted itself as a holiday destination. Visitor numbers are soaring earning the country a staggering 70 billion US dollars a year. And there's more to come. Some predict a tripling of visitors by 2030 to 100 million tourists a year. But Thailand is feeling the strain. Its beautiful beaches are crowded with people, polluting its waters and destroying precious coral and mountains of waste are piling up, so much that no one knows what to do with them. It may be time to ask, is tourism hurting Thailand? The fear of our tourism impact right now is, is to grow and grow and grow. And it's not a fear, it's a fact. <laughs> A team of marine scientists dives onto the coral reef on the island of Koh Kai near Phuket in southern Thailand. Their research shows up to 90% of the reef in this area is dead or dying, in large part due to human activity. Tourist boats drop their anchors onto the coral, ripping out huge chunks. Snorkelers walk on the brittle reef. Some even break off pieces as souvenirs. One nearby airport confiscates up to 100 kilograms of coral from passengers each day. Human intrusion drives out the living organisms on which the coral depends to survive. Coral isn't just beautiful to look at, it's a living animal that's used to make medicines to treat cancer, Alzheimer's and heart disease. Dr. Nalini has seen the reef's gradual destruction. Yeah, I'm so sad because I, I have been uh, work on, on coral for more than 20 years and I, I saw uh, in very good, good coral condition. The living coral is almost 100%, but right now the living coral maybe is around only 10% left, so it's very bad. This is where man and nature collide head-on. Boatloads of tourists converge on these tiny islands in the Andaman Sea, lured by the white sand, warm waters and plentiful fish. It's the natural beauty of places like this that attracts tourists in large numbers. Up to half of all visitors to Thailand come here for so-called ocean tourism. But ironically, if there are too many those same tourists can destroy the very beauty they come to enjoy. Maya Bay at Pipi Island, made famous as an idyllic hideaway in the Leonardo DiCaprio movie The Beach, is struggling to cope with the influx of tourists. At times, up to 10,000 people a day visit this tiny stretch of sand. Something as simple as feeding the fish can seem harmless, but it has a big impact and it's now prohibited. 
One tourist who was caught feeding bread to fish to attract them to his camera for a photo faced a maximum penalty of being sent to prison. Instead, he was given just a small fine in an attempt to educate rather than punish. At his laboratory in Thailand's capital, Bangkok, Dr. Ton studies the impact of tourism on the marine environment. Like in Thailand, we have uh, the problem a lot with the feeding uh, reef fish. There are a lot of fish, but only a few of species that eat uh, bread or something that you give it to them. And then they try to control all the reef and uh, get rid of other fish that uh, try to control the algae, the seaweed, or whatever in the ecosystem. So the ecosystem collapsed if you have too many fish in one species. It's often a first visit to the area for divers and snorkelers. Sometimes guides are unwilling to stop their enjoyment, so little supervision is given. Other thing, like uh, you uh, take a selfie with a uh, living sea star, whatever. There are not many sea stars in the snorkeling side. One sea star may be collect up down, collect up down 10 times a day. <laughs> That's a problem to the sea star and, and maybe die. There are serious concerns over the impact of such huge numbers of visitors on shorelines and beaches and the future of the coral reef. For the first time, an entire island and the sea around it has been closed to tourists for an indefinite period. The authorities say without the closure, Koh Tachai, just a few kilometers from here, would be unable to recover from the damage caused by tourists. And they're warning if it happens elsewhere, more islands may have to be closed. Another issue is human waste. Water treatment plants simply can't cope with the amount that's generated in tourist destinations. Sometimes untreated water has to be discharged into the sea. Like a PP island, we have, uh, they can control around 300 uh, cubic meters a day. Now we have 1,800. So that's a problem for the water water plant, as you can see, it requires a large amount of money, funding. Only at PP, we need 500 million baht. Only at PP. We have got Samet, we have got Samui, we have Phuket, we have whatever. So it may be need, need more than 20,000 or 30,000 million baht to upgrade every water quality plant around Thailand. This is what healthy coral looks like. A multitude of colors and a diverse mix of species. But this is in a laboratory. And a far cry from the dull browns and greys of decaying coral now found around much of Thailand's shores. We cannot stop tourist activities, but if we have a good management, like uh, we, maybe we have a zonation for the people who use area uh, in this area, like uh, where they can do snorkeling, where do they can anchoring, or where, where do we have to protect the area for coral to recover. It should be balanced between tourists and also the environment. Dr. Ton compared PP Island's coral reef to the world famous Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Great Barrier Reef Marine Park in Australia, the largest marine park in the world, the World Heritage Area. They have uh, around uh, 340,000 square kilometer, more than half of Thailand. They have only 2.4 million of visitors. PP Island have only 300 square kilometer. We have 1.6 million. So huge area, this amount, just only tiny area, almost the same amount. So that is one problem, too many tourists. The more the tourists come, the more they need somewhere to stay. Many areas of natural beauty have been lost to development, and the sheer weight of numbers brings enormous demands. This is the popular and picturesque holiday destination of Koh Samui. The island's permanent Thai population is just 60,000, but every year that's multiplied by more than 2 million visitors. 
the resulting garbage is now out of control. There's at least a quarter of a million tons of rubbish dumped here, spread around the grounds of a broken down incinerator. The pile of trash is as high as a three-story building and it's growing at the rate of 150 tons every day. Covering it with a huge canvas tarpaulin is being considered, but in the end the whole lot may have to be taken to the mainland. ตอนแรกเราก็มีการการแยกต้นทางแล้วก็มาก็ในโรงงานการแยกภายในภายในโรงของเราไปเบรกก็ไม่ได้เค้ามาขออนุญาตสร้างโรงแรมเราก็ต้องจําเป็นต้องให้ถ้าไม่ให้ก็ไม่ได้เพราะในโกกฎหมายไม่ได้ก
Meet China's decision makers and thought leaders. See them in action. Hear their views. Debate their policies. Meet China's leaders with me. I'm Robert Lawrence Kim. From emerging powers to expanding partnerships, from fighting poverty to combating climate change, booming economies, war-ravaged nations, and everything in between, we capture the changes affecting the most dynamic and diverse continent on the planet, taking you beyond the headlines to the people and their stories. Asia Today, delivering Asia to the world. Culture Express. See the world in color. Full frame is bigger and better than ever. We're now coming to you from New York City, from our studio in Times Square. With celebrity interviews and in-depth features. We're now taking you further from the East and West Coast. Let's take it full frame. Millions of tons of plastic waste go into the world's oceans every year, harming marine life, as plastic takes forever to decompose. And the bulk of it, according to studies, comes from the Philippines. But that same country may now hold the key to solving the menace. In Manila, video journalist Peter Carney met a 15-year-old boy who's invented biodegradable plastic out of love for the environment. You know, we are blessed as a country you know, to have so many species, different kinds of species of animals, plants, you're blessed to have coral reefs, beautiful landmarks, you know, an amazing country, actually. I'm afraid that maybe we're so used to it, you know, that we're starting to take it for granted. Um, my name is Amin Hataman. I'm from FIS, Fountain International School. I am very concerned about the environment here. Growing up in Mindanao, you know, I spent a big deal of my childhood there. I had it as my standard of how the environment should be. And when I came to Manila, right, um, I was just you know, surprised by how modern everything was, but also by the lack of nature in a sense. So, you know, it made me want to work on a project like this and help out as much as I can, do as much as I can with the little power I have. 
learning that the Philippines is the third largest polluter of uh, plastic in the ocean is something not to be proud of. Because of that, one makes, makes you think, how can we help you know, address that problem? And hopefully make the Philippines be more responsible in disposing of uh, the plastic. Aside from the shift in um, the way we think about the use of plastics, another uh, very important um, solution to addressing plastic waste is the use of biodegradable materials. The main idea is that it's a biodegradable plastic made from nata de coco. Of course, yeah, it's biodegradable, which means that <clears throat> compared to the normal commercial plastic that we use nowadays, it doesn't take such a long time to degrade. That's why if it's you know left alone or if it's just thrown in the garbage and no one picks it up, it won't you know start to clog the drainage pipes. It'll just melt away. Uh, nata de coco is um, a dessert, pretty much a, a weird thing to make plastic from, but it's fermented coconut juice in a sense, solidified uh, mainly here in the Philippines. It's used as a snack. We get the pure one and we put it inside a mixture that will, in a sense, catalyze the uh, no, properties and help it develop the properties that it has now. And then we sun dry it to make it more, in a sense, translucent and stronger. It's pretty much a prototype, so we haven't necessarily finished a plastic yet. We just uh, sun dried it yesterday. I'm really happy with you know, how transparent this is. I've, we've never, of all the plastics we've made, this is, I'm pretty sure, by far the most transparent. And I mean, I can sort of like, you know, put my hand behind this and I can, you can kind of see it. And yeah, it still retains, even though it's uh, this thin and transparent, the properties that, it is, that you know, other plastics have, it's still strong. Hopefully there's more to come and hopefully we'll be able to improve this more. Well, of course, we're an archipelago, so it would be normal for a, a big, you know, uh, a big part of the population to be dependent on, you know, products from the ocean. Normally, when people throw trash, they don't think to that extent. Of course, hindi ka makakita ng tao parang tatapon sila na just, oh nga, yung fisherman. No, it's very rare that that happens. People do know how, how big of an impact this is. I think there's ano, a chance naman of uh, helping these guys out. Yes, there is a problem, uh, especially on the plastic waste. There are studies conducted by the DNR and on waste, and the majority of the waste that uh, we are be, uh, that are being produced by the people are made up of plastics. Um, this is evident every time we do coastal cleanups, where majority of the waste collected in the ocean are made up of plastics. Because of the effect of plastics to our uh, marine habitats. The, the fishery production is also affected because uh, once a marine habitat like the coral reefs are, are destroyed, um, fish also tends to decline in numbers because uh, these um, coral reefs, uh, seagrass beds, and mangroves are important for fishery production. Start kami noong September 11, 2011 doon sa panawagan na mag clean up para ipakita yung kaseryosohan ng mga residente, mga environmentalists, individuals na concerned doon sa pangalaga ng kalikasan na uh, pangalagaan tong Freedom Island kasi siya yung nag-iisang critical habitat sa Metro Manila at saka last mangrove frontier dito sa Metro Manila. Mabalik yung dumi, lalo na kapag may pagkatapos ng ulan, bagyo. Dahil nga yung Manila Bay na part na part yung Freedom Island ay ano siya siya yung pinaka lagusan ng mga tributaries ng mga ilog kanal sa buong Metro Manila. Kaya lahat ng basura na galing sa buong Metro Manila kapag umulan, ano doon yung kumbaga pinaka imbakan niya. Kaya kapag umulan, balik ang basura. Kaya makikita mo na tampak uli yung basura. Uh, well, Filipinos uh, find convenience in using plastics. Um, everything you buy is sometimes be, uh, have multiple packaging. 
and another one is for economic reasons, especially those uh, people buying um, what we call tingi, you know? uh, rather than buying the in bulk, uh, they they buy uh, the ones in sachets. You know, maliit lang yung plastic na to. Wala naman tong mga gawa, itapon ko na lang. Marami na ring basura dyan eh. Right? You just, kasi you think that there's already so much trash. So why not just throw it? It's just one plastic. The thing is, how many times you do that? And how many people think like that? And once everyone starts to think like that, it's going to, in a sense, have a snowball effect. Siyempre, una, um... Dati naman na buhay tayo na walang plastic eh. Yung mga, mga magulang natin. So, siyempre, parang... Sa atin, lalo na sa mga kabataan ngayon, napakalaga na pangalagaan yung kalikasan kasi lahat ng disaster na nagaganap ay may kinalaman doon sa pagsalaula natin, pagsira natin sa kalikasan. It would just be nice for us to be able to find an alternative, you know, um, going to supermarkets, right? You know, when we don't need to necessarily hold on to those plastics long enough. Maybe, sure, the nata de Copa plastic can come in there. Uh, well, at the end, I hope to see it sort of like be most more used, hopefully, than commercial plastic. I know it's sort of like a, it's a long shot or maybe it's like still far away, but that's really what I want to happen. Amin's invention, which started as a school project, has won several awards in the Philippines and abroad. In 2016, Forbes magazine named him as one of 30 notable Asian personalities in the field of healthcare and science. He was the youngest on the list. You can learn more about this and all the stories on today's program on our website, www.assignment-asia.com. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Martin Lowe. Thanks for watching and join us again on Assignment Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.我的名字叫唯一然后我现在是一名大四的学生当时我们在你种完树之后能够让可能处于一种摇摆态度的人想要去了解我们是做一些什么事情的